Well, it's great to be here at the uh, Harvey Bay Historical Village and Museum and standing right in the centre of undoubtedly the, the largest uh, permanent display of Mahino memorabilia in, well, in, in, in existence. It's, it's quite a, an extensive display of stuff and, and the story of the Mahino is a very, very uh, interesting one and I'll try to uh, explain a few things about it that I'm sure you'll be interested in. And really the story of the Mahino was not very well known until several years ago when the centenary of Anzac came around in 2015 and it was realised that the Mahino uh, is the largest relic of Gallipoli in Australia. Previously, it had just been an accepted part of our local area and a great fishing spot. Today, rather than give you a, a long list of boring numbers as to its length and weight and features and everything, I thought it would be a good idea to give you some idea of the interesting history and stories that may not be so well known. The TSS Mahino was a unique vessel right from the very start when it was built in 1905 at Dunbarton in Scotland. On the Clyde River, near today's Glasgow, the ship was the first ocean-going liner powered by steam turbine engines. Turbine engines uh, had been used for smaller ferries but never on larger ocean-going vessels. Hence, we have the TSS Mahino, the turbine ship or the turbine steamship Mahino. Rather than steam engines with pistons similar to motor vehicles, spin, uh, the, the turbine engines are very similar to current jet engines which spin very rapidly but still use coal-fired steam to drive them. So the Mahino had three relatively small propellers spinning at very high speed and could not be reversed, making it necessary to have an auxiliary motor to reverse the ship if it ever had to, uh, to turn around. The Mahina held many, steam, uh, many, many speed records, including the Australian-New Zealand uh, Tasman crossing for many, many years. It was owned by the Union Steamship Company of New Zealand and named after the town of Mahino, which is a small country rural area just south of Christchurch on the South Island of New Zealand. And it was the, the ship of choice for Australian New Zealand passengers before the advent of airliners. It carried parliamentarians, sporting teams, VIPs, including, we believe, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and many other famous names across the Tasman in those early, early days. World War I saw the Mahino converted into a hospital ship by the New Zealand government and it arrived at Gallipoli very, very early in the First World War and transferred thousands of wounded soldiers from the battlefields to the safety of Egypt and the Mediterranean. We are very fortunate to have here, right here in display, at, this, at, 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 our, at our museum, a copy of the casualty form for an Australian soldier wounded at Gallipoli and transferred to the hospital ship Mahino. After World War I, the Mahino was refitted as a passenger liner and some 16 new cabins were added to the stern of the ship. She continued her Tasman crossings as well as trips to Canada and to other overseas countries. By the early 1930s, however, newer oil-burning steamers replaced the older technology and the Mahino had reached the end of her useful life. Okay, so the Union Steamship Company eventually sold the Mahino and another one of its ships, the Una, uh, for scrap to a company in Japan and there they would have been uh, broken down and uh, remelted and uh, as has often been mentioned probably used in the war effort in uh, for the Second World War. The smaller Una was chosen as a towing vessel. The propellers were removed from the Mahino uh, to make the towing easier and stored on board but the bell which we fortunately have a very, very exact replica of here, right here, and we'll show you shortly, uh, was kept at the company's office. All of the furniture and fittings remained on board the Mahino. In July 1935, the UNA, towing the Mahino, set out for Japan. 
some 100 kilometres off the Queensland coast. Fortunately, right off our coast here on the Fraser Coast. An unprecedented winter cyclone hit and the tow line broke. It was almost as if the Mahino were saying, I'm not going to be scrapped. I'll spend the rest of my days on the golden sands of Fraser Island. The vessels quickly separated and no one knew where the Mahino was for several days. It was eventually spotted on the beach from a private plane flying along the coast and it has remained, of course, in the same spot since that fateful day in July 1935. The Japanese crew on board the Mahino were stranded with no radio, no propellers and helpless to do anything to save the ship. How different it was then when compared to modern communications. The story that unfolded is fascinating. Captain Tanaka from the Mahino boarded a lifeboat from the towing vessel Una and motored north around Sandy Cape, probably about uh, 80 or 90 kilometres, rounded the Cape and back down to Woody Island. The only undersea telephone line to Fraser Island was broken at that time, but Captain Tanaka got to the middle lighthouse on Woody Island, which was a post and telegraph station, and was able to send a telegram back to his superiors in Japan, explaining the situation. Again, we are very, very fortunate to have right here in our museum an exact copy of the original telegram sent by Captain Tanaka. With no chance of the uh, ship ever being refloated, Australian custom officers were dispatched to the island to ensure that nothing was removed from the ship as duty would have been payable. Unlike today, only a handful of Harvey Bay boat owners had motor boats that could reach the island and vehicles that were able to cross over the sandy tracks through the scrub to the back beach. The eastern or ocean side of Fraser Island has always been referred to as the back beach, a tradition that is still used by locals here today. The very, very wily few locals soon discovered that a few cases of rum were all that was needed to ensure the customs officers had a wonderful stay. So our locals were then able to remove whatever they could from the stranded Mahino, unhindered by customs officials. So it was that everything, including the kitchen sink, was removed and transferred to the mainland. Items big and small finished up in homes in Harvey Bay and Miribra. Hundreds of chairs, beds, washstands, windows, air vents, tiles, and virtually anything that could be removed were transported to the mainland. Even the elaborate stained glass dome from the Grand Ballroom finished up as a feature in the Central Picture Theatre at Scarness. Our museum has a wonderful permanent display of many of these artefacts. Over 30 years later, in 1967, the ship's bell was donated to the Mahino State School in New Zealand by the shipping company. And for the Anzac celebrations in 2015, permission was granted by the New Zealand government for the bell, the actual bell, to be brought to Australia. And exact replicas down to the last groove and, 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 and rut in it were cast by Owls Engineering here in Miribra and the original return to New Zealand. A feature in our museum, the bell is rung by our visitors, thus ensuring that the Mahino story continues to evoke memories that will ensure future generations know and appreciate this integral part of our history. A little known, fascinating story emerged as the Mahino settled into its permanent uh, resting place on the island. In the 1930s, just three groups in the world, one in England, one in Belgium, and one in Brisbane, were experimenting with rockets long before NASA was even dreamed of. The idea was for rockets to be used to deliver mail to ships at sea so that vessels would not have to enter ports during their journeys. The Brisbane group chose Fraser Island and the Mahino to experiment with their rockets. Rockets carrying postal letters were fired from the beach onto the deck of the Mahino 
and also vice versa from the Hino to, to the land. These letters were then forwarded by ordinary postal mail services through the Pialba Post Office. These letters, some signed by Captain Tanaka, are today extremely rare and valuable and traded internationally by stamp dealers worldwide. You can see an original here at the museum, rocket airmail letter signed by Captain Tanaka at the Harvey Bay uh, Museum uh, Mahino exhibit. Eventually, after about 12 months, the Japanese uh, crew that had stayed on the island with the Mahino returned to Japan. The Mahino continued to sink further into the sand. The harder uh, to remove fixtures such as brass portholes and the like were removed and the initial excitement ended. Most of the brass portholes were melted down at Walker shipyards and used in the war effort for their brass, but at least four that we know of remain. One right here with us at, uh, in Zephyr Street at Skarnes. Um, within a very, very few short years, World War II started and there were stories that the Japanese crew had mapped the sheltered waters of Harvey Bay to be used as an entry point for Japanese invasion, but there is no credible evidence for such tales. There is very, very credible evidence, however, long held secret, and I've lived here all my life and knew nothing about it until probably the 1970s, that commandos equivalent to our modern day SAS trained on Fraser Island. They practiced jungle warfare and hand-to-hand -hand fighting and successfully managed to plant bombs on the Mahino and blow down the front main mast. Even the RAF used the Mahino for bombing practice, but fortunately they were never once successful. This commando training assisted in the successful carrying out of JWIC, the code name for the raid on Singapore Harbour, uh, by a small group of commandos in, in the crate and the crate was a small Japanese fishing vessel that they had gone over and stolen from the um, harbour at, uh, at Singapore. The radio operator on the crate for Operation Jaywick was Horry Young, who eventually retired in, in the latter years to Harvey Bay. And he brought with him an actual piece of the crate, which is now part of our museum collection. For some 20 years after the war, Fraser Island was still a hidden treasure, with very few visitors due to the lack of large ferries and the difficulty of transversing uh, the sandy tracks across the island. Timber and mining continued until eventually phased out and Fraser Island gained world heritage status. The Mahino continued to sink further into the sand the rusting hulk we see today hides many metres of the ship, complete with the turbine engines beneath the sands and will still be there when the exposed top decks are gone forever. Today the many thousands of visitors to Fraser Island look at the wreck and probably have little idea of the story that lies behind the rusted metal. Now over 110 years old, the Mihino has been part of our local history for well over 80 years. She is an iconic wreck in Australia's history, had an involvement in two world wars, is a great tourist attraction for this area, the mecca for fishermen for many years, been photographed countless times, was the venue for a wedding, witnessed the changes on Fraser Island from wilderness to, to, to world heritage, but above all, has become one of the most significant parts of our local history. In 1905, way back then, a worker at the Dunbarton shipyards, working on the Mahino, scribbled a note in pencil on the back of a piece of pine moulding he was installing. Part of the note reads, Dunbarton, Scotland, 1905 in the year of our Lord, signed by, and we can't distinguish, someone McTavish, obviously Scotch. That very piece of timber now resides at our museum, and I am sure that the humble workman way back then would have had no idea 
of the influence the ship that he was help, helping to build was to have in the lives of so many people. I now give you a, an idea of uh, the sound of the Mahino Bell, which had to be audible for at least one nautical mile from the ship. So I'm not going to ring it loudly, but this over 50 kilograms of bronze and the bell rope uh, is a unique part again of our wonderful collection here at the Harvey Bay Historical Village and Museum.